Man, how many of you knew Rudy in the very first time we reached him? Awesome. Was he a very quiet, like low key guy that like, he never wanted attention, or was he very animated? And, both. And he was <laughs> both, right? Awesome. So we're hoping that we honor him adequately. Um, I'll be honest, I didn't get the opportunity, the privilege to know him in a very, very personal way. But just hearing the stories from his daughter, um, and I'm excited to hear the stories from you guys as I um, hear the whispers and the stories and the good things that you guys say about him today. Uh, and so today's program, we have um, a short video, but we want to start in prayer. And so close your eyes, by your head as we get ready to honor this life. Father, we give you thanks because we're not here, Lord God, to mourn, Lord God, necessarily the loss of somebody, God, because your word says that uh, this life, we're just sojourners, we're passing by. And so yes, Lord God, our soul is saddened because we will temporarily not see somebody for a while. In this case, Lord God, Rudy Father was a father, a husband, Lord, a great man of God. He was not perfect, but you didn't call us to be perfect, Lord. But he was somebody that strongly believed in you and did his best to serve you at his greatest capacity through the power of the Holy Spirit. And what we want to do today, God, is celebrate more than more. We want to rejoice in the privilege that we had in knowing Him. We want to remember, Father, the great stories, Lord, and even a few things that maybe other people didn't know about Him, God. May we share, Lord God, the victories. May we share the joyous moments. And when sadness wants to creep in, Lord God, help us process sadness, because sadness is not always a bad thing. Sadness is an indication that there was love, that there was a connection. And if there is a part of us that hurts because we won't see Rudy for a while, that means, Lord God, that he meant something to us, Father. And so we thank you because your word says, cry with those who cry and laugh with those who laugh. And today, Father, we will do both. And as we go through the program and celebrate Rudy's life, we are just excited, Lord, to be able to know that he is in a better place and that we will one day see him again. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. We have a video for you guys to watch. If the media team can please put that up and hit the lights. And uh, they're going to play that for you guys right now. Not realizing and understanding the spiritual 
part of God. But I went up there to the altar and really gave my heart totally, completely to the Lord. Did you feel a change right then? Oh, right away. You know, 2 Corinthians says, uh, 5, 17, Therefore, if any man be Christ, he is a new creature. I came out of that place, uh, you know, seeing everything beautiful, like the light was hitting, you know, the outside of the world. And really soon I found that that year I was studying in jail 20 years before, and not in vain. day. Every night I made an effort to go every evening, and uh, some scripture will come to remembrance that I studied in jail. And then, like, the word was really coming alive now that I had Jesus in me. As he walked the streets of Lodi, Rudy was a different man. A man who couldn't escape what he felt for those he saw in the streets. With $500 in his pocket, he set out to do something to help. I had all the, all the church praying. I had your club, the 700 club praying for this. I wanted to do the Lord's will. At number 7 Sacramento Street, Rudy found what he was looking for. Do you have any share? No. you have any tables? No. All I have is a Bible. So he says, I have all that. I'll read it to you. Let's see. 350 for this. And you know, at the end, he says, total $500. They didn't want to jump and shout because I knew that the Lord was in it. And that was the beginning of the Lodi New Life Mission. The clothing, the food, the shelter is just a bait. Have you seen a fisherman go out and fish with some bait? No, you won't catch that bait, right? So the Lord uses this material to catch the fish, is to catch the soul and of the man. Ten years later, the Lodi New Life Mission is in full swing. With space for worship services each day, hot meals to be served, a stacked medical clinic, and beds for over 40 people. Rudy Rodriguez has found a way to make a difference in his corner of the world. From 25 years of drugs and alcoholism that I saw AA, I went to RDC, I spent time in recovery, I spent time in jails, and, and uh, they got to put those programs down. They do help. They help the physical. You get married, you get covered, you're scared, you eat good. But the, the soul, you come out there, you still come out empty. And that's what God did in my life. That big challenge, they gave me my answer that I needed. And that's what Rudy Rodriguez and the Lodi New Life Mission are all about. Showing troubled lives that Jesus Christ really is the answer. The Lord is pressing my heart to go share this love, this Jesus that changed my life, to share it with people now.
Lena Rodriguez is going to be doing the eulogy. Okay, <laughs> she's tagging me in. I got you. before you today with a heavy heart, yet I am strengthened by the memories, the teachings, and the love my father left behind. I want to share with you some aspect of, aspects of his life that made him the extraordinary man that he was and the incredible father that I will always remember him as. My father was a gentle force. He was not loud or imposing, yet his presence was always felt. For those of you who say amen. <laughs> I see him a gentle but powerful soul. It's such a profound impact on those around him. Some of his favorite things were drinking an ice cold Coke or a nice hot coffee, accompanied by a donor of a sweet treat. He enjoyed dining out at restaurants often yet as a simple person. His all time favorite meal was Jack in the Box tacos. Hallelujah. If you know, you know. He loved going to the movies in these later years and it became one of our favorite pastimes as a family. But more than anything else in his life, he loved his family fiercely and without reserve. As his daughter, I was lucky to be at the receiving end of it, this profound love for 37 years. The last 11 years caring for him was a gift to not only myself, but for my husband and sons. Although there were tough days, crazy days, with him getting into trouble, the amazing and beautiful days outweighed everything. He traveled so many places, experienced so many things together, Memories that I will never, that I will forever hold so dear to my heart. From camping to cross country and road trips, he was always down for an adventure. I recall my father's twinkling eyes, always full of mischief, and his laughter that could light up the gloomiest of rooms. His stories were filled with wisdom, humor, and sense of adventure that left me yearning for more. He taught me that life was an incredible journey, not a destination. He showed me the beauty and simplicity and the joy in the ordinary. One of my fondest memories of my father was when he taught me to ride a bicycle. I remember being terrified, my tiny hands gripping the handlebars tightly as he held the seat steady, running alongside me. Even when I wobbled, fell, and wanted to give up, he would just smile, dust me off, and say, Lena, falling is part of learning. We fall, we rise, we try again. That's how we grow. His encouragement then has always bolstered me, and soon I was pedaling down Sacramento Street, my fear replaced with exhilaration. That was just one of the countless life lessons he taught me. This set the tone for the rest of my life, knowing and feeling I could do anything. I wanted to because he was always not far behind with me, encouraging, and there should I and there should I fall. Ready to help me get back up and try again. I fully understand and appreciate that not everyone gets to experience that kind of unwavering love and support that I am forever grateful and thankful for God for blessing me with my father as my pillar of strength and support system. It could not have been easy as a single man raising a daughter, but he never gave up on me. No matter how tough it got, no matter how, what storm we faced, he never wavered. My father was a man of strong values and immense passion. He lived his life on his terms, guided by principles of honesty, kindness, and integrity. He believed in hard work and perseverance. His hearty laughter was a testament to his infectious love for life. Coming from such humble beginnings and molding his life into what he did was such an accomplishment I admired. Nothing was impossible or out of reach to him. If he didn't know how to do something, he would learn. Fear did not reside in him. He used to tell me that with God, he was unstoppable. His work ethic, dedication, and hustle has been one of the greatest traits he taught me to always be the hardest worker in the room, to go after anything you want and seize every opportunity. Today, as I stand here, the depth of my loss is immeasurable. I lost my best friend in life, my always present support system, my counselor, my mentor, my only parent, the one person who knew me better than I knew myself. But as great my loss, even greater is the gratitude. 
I'm grateful for the times we shared, for the wisdom he imparted, and for the love he gave us. I'm grateful for his patience, his guidance, and his unwavering faith in me. Even though I miss him terribly, I know he would want us to remember him with joy and not sorrow. I know beyond a shadow of doubt he is in heaven, running, jumping, and praising the Lord with my mother, his siblings, and countless friends, but has passed on. He has no pain. His body is restored. He has reached his final goal and made it to his Savior. He prepared us for this moment by teaching us to find comfort and grace in God's love. Losing my father has left an immense void in my heart, but his teachings and memories fill that space in his death. As in his life, he continues to be my pillar of strength. Today, we not only mourn my father's departure, but also celebrate his life, his achievements, and the legacy he leaves behind. So here's to my father, the remarkable man, a guiding light, a pillar of strength, and the best dad a daughter could ever hope for. As we say goodbye, I promise to keep your memory alive, to live by the values you taught me, and to make you proud. I love you, Dad, and I miss you more than words can express. Thank you all for being here today to remember my father, to celebrate his life, and to share our grief. It means more than I can express. People in our life that are like branches on a tree. Some are lightweight, and when the wind blows, they break and fall. Some are a little stronger and may last through a few seasons. And then there are the roots, the people who stand with you no matter how terrible the storm, how strong the winds, they do not break. So many of our roots are here today. We love you and thank you for standing in the gap of the darkness, hardest and most life-changing moments with us. As I conclude this tribute, let's remember my father for the exceptional man he was and take comfort in knowing that his spirit, his teachings, and his love will continue to live on in each one of us. Let us think of his love for the destitute, the homeless, the imprisoned, the people whose society has forgotten. God asks us to be ambassadors of his love and to show them he has not forgotten them. My father and each of our experiences and memories with him will live on through us. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to experience and borrow him here on the earth for 82 amazing years. Thank you for his legacy, his life, his testimony. Thank you, God, for showing us through my Father how real, deep, and endless your love is. That no matter where we are in life, no matter how terrible and ugly our past is, in your eyes, we are perfect and still your children. How many say amen to that? Amen. You can, you can praise Jesus if you want. Somebody wants to grow. It's okay. <laughs> I had to catch myself. I was about to cry. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Him. This man reminds me of my own father, which is still alive. And again, the more I read about him, the more I wish I would have at least met him. John chapter 11, verses 21 through 26. I just have a few passages for you. I know Rudy would have loved for you guys to hear the word of God. And if you don't have your Bibles with you, we have them up here for you on the screen. And it says in the New Living Translation, John chapter 11, verse 21 through 26. This is after Martha lost her brother, which is Lazarus. Uh, Jesus took his time in responding to Martha and Mary's request for him to come. And I don't know about you, but I've been through seasons where I've wanted Jesus to give me an answer now where I wanted him to heal my best friends, my loved ones now. But we believe as Christians that Jesus has a plan for us all. And we believe that he is the one that calls us home because he's the one that allows us to live here on this earth. And so God knew when it was Rudy's time. But one thing I love about this passage is that even when we doubt Jesus, even when we doubt our maker, and even when we have that right to privilege, because I don't know if you knew this, but we serve a God that allows us to complain to him, that allows us to be human to him. And this is why I love, in a weird way, funerals, because it's okay to be mad. It's okay to be upset, it's okay to be sad, it's okay to be happy. It's okay to just be whatever you're feeling at the moment, because God gave you those emotions. And so Jesus comes, Lazarus has passed away. Uh, he seems to be too late. And so verse 21 and on says, Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if only you had been here, my brother would not have died. 
But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus told her, your brother will rise again. Yes, Martha said. He will rise when everyone else rises at the last day. And Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. Everyone who lives in me and believes in me will never, ever die. Do you believe this, Martha? And I believe that Jesus is asking us that same question. John chapter 14, verse 16, right, says that he is the way, the truth, and life. And the legend of Billy Graham goes, I'm not sure how accurate this story is, but it always inspires me. It says that when he went to a um, revival, he sat in the back, and right when he was about to leave, the usher stopped him, encouraged him to come back. And the preacher was preaching on Jesus being the way, the truth, and life. And at that moment, Billy Graham had to make a decision. He said, either I believe that this man named Jesus is crazy for thinking that he's the only way, and that there's no other religion, there's no other pathway, that you can't buy your way to heaven, that you can't work your way to heaven, or do I believe that he really is the way, the truth, and life, and that only grace and grace alone can save you. See, because as human beings, we can pretend to be good, but what really is good? Deep down inside of us, we can all be very evil. Deep down inside of us, we all have this tendency that Paul talks about as a sinful tendency. And Rudy had a testimony. He had a past. But thanks be to God that the devil has a plan for us, but God also does. How many say amen? <laughs> and God intervened and saved Rudy and used him to bless so many other lives. And one thing I love about Christianity is that it gives us hope. Hope that death is not the end. Philippians chapter 1. Verse 21 says, because for me to live is Christ, and to die is to gain. Just think about that for a minute. To die is to gain. It's not that we're a masochistic religion, no. But when you have walked with Jesus, when you have seen his power in your life, when you have felt his experiencing transforming power in your life, you have no shadow of a doubt that death, when he comes at your door, he's like an old friend. And when you see him, and he sees that your heart is sealed by the blood of Jesus. He says, oh, you're one of those. They're waiting for you. They're waiting for you. But when you don't walk with Jesus, that's why it's grim. And that's why I dislike, even though I've been part of it, being in funerals where there's no hope, where it really feels like a goodbye, where it really feels like we won't see you again. But if you're a believer of Christ, like Rudy was, you don't have to say goodbye. Today you walk out of here saying, so I see you next time. And that's amazing. One time I remember as a young man, I grew up in church and I have defended my faith since I was six years old. And we had these Jehovah Witnesses come to our doorstep. And they try to argue with me about how Ecclesiastes says that from dust you came and to dust you shall return. And I told him for a quick minute, I'm like, man, how I wish that was so true. I'm like, well, it is. And I said, no, it's not. But because in life, there's consequences. And there is such a thing as hell and heaven. And they're like, well, and they try to, you know, defeat the purpose of the argument. And I found it to him, look, man, so you're telling me that if I walk your path, I can do whatever the heck I want, sleep with whoever the heck I want, do whatever I want, and there will be no consequences because I'll go back to the dust. Well, I mean, when you put it that way, that's not what we mean. What I meant is, and they just, they just couldn't say it. And so I remember when I came to Christ at a young age, I gave my life to the Lord out of fear of going to hell. But as I kept walking with Jesus, I realized that I wanted to walk with him out of love. Because I don't know about you, but the video that I just saw shows me a man that was living in hell on earth, having to flee from the police, Living a life consumed by anxiety, consumed by when will they catch me? And so I'm not here to preach to you and remind you that you should wait until you die to figure out if maybe you'll make it or not. But some of us here in this room, I don't know you, but Jesus knows you, have experienced already hell on earth. Some of you should have been dead. Some of you, anxiety and depression should have taken you already. But you're here. And I don't think there's a coincidence of why you're here. And as I end this short sermon, Revelations chapter 12, verse 11 says this, and I love it. This is those who accepted Christ, those who on day of judgment, the Bible teaches us, 
will be proclaimed conquerors. And it says, and they have defeated him who is sin, the enemy, our sinful nature, by the blood of the Lamb. That's the first part. There are two things here. See, we are saved by grace. We are saved by the name of Jesus. And I've learned this, and I want to teach you today this. We don't do works to be saved. But because we're saved, and out of expression of love, we live a Christian, holy life as best as we can. Because you cannot buy your way into heaven, you cannot work your way into heaven, you can be the nicest person on the block. And let me tell you something, the devil, Satan, he's okay with people being good. He has nothing against people being good. He hates it when people have Jesus in their hearts. That's what he hates. Because there's gonna be a lot of good people in hell, and there's gonna be a lot of Christians in hell. In heaven, there's gonna be a lot of sinners. How many say amen? <laughs> Whoa, you're contradicting the Bible. No, there's gonna be a lot of redeemed sinners, a lot of ex convicts, a lot of ex drug addicts, a lot of ex whatever you name it. And those people are the ones that accepted the blood of the Lamb. But look how it keeps going. He says, and by their testimony. So you see the balance? We need the blood of Jesus to save us. We need to accept the fact that we are sinners and we are destined for a world without God. And as I wrap up, God loves us so much that he gifted us this thing called free will. And he respects and loves you so much that he is willing to let you live a life without him. And this is what catches people off guard when they say, Pastor, but I've lived a good life. Do you really think God will send me to hell? God doesn't send anybody to hell. You choose where you want to go. If you live the life 80, 20, 30, 15 years without God, you really think God is going to force you to live with him for all eternity? Just think about that for a minute. If, if he didn't love you, and if he forced you to be with him for all eternity, even though for those years you didn't want to, that's going to feel like hell to you. It is. Because a lot of you think, oh, well, if I go to heaven, no. Everything you like here on earth that is against God in heaven, trust me, is going to be amplified. If you don't like the preacher, and if you don't like crazy Christians, and, and being hugged, and being loved, and you think they're annoying, trust me, they're all going to be up there. There are going to be a bunch of Rudys up there trying to teach you about Jesus, and you're going to be annoyed just the one minute of being there. This is why we're here on earth. God loves us so much that he gave his only begotten son. And whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. And he respects and loves us, and that's why he gives us this free gift of free will to choose. And so today, he's encouraging some of you. He's saying, my child, my creation, you have the choice. A life with me here on earth, or a life without me. So that when we meet face to face, we will not be able to say, God, you're sending me. No, you chose to live a life without me. So therefore, hell is a life without me. Rudy came to a crossroads and nothing else worked. And he finally said, let's give this Jesus man a try. And he was saved. And he was transformed. And not only that, he didn't just stop there. He wanted to give back. Only Jesus can do that, guys. Only Jesus can do that. He wasn't a multimillionaire, right? He wasn't a multimillionaire, right? Okay, cool. <laughs> He wasn't a philanthropist, right? Because there's a lot of people that have a lot of money and they poured into nonprofits. No, he used what he had, like that young man with the fishes and the loaves. And, and all he said is, I got energy, I got a story. And he said, God, use me with this. And that's all God wants. He says, What do you have that I can use? And Rudy said, God, I have a testimony, I have a few connections. Use me. And man, was he used. Just look at you around here. You're here because he impacted you in some type of way. He chose to stop living a life without God and just saying, God, you're my everything. And so Rudy is a conqueror. He is a victor because of the blood of the Lamb and because of his testimony. You are here because of this man's testimony. Because you would not be here if this man was a jerk. Let's be real. <laughs> this man had to have blessed you. This man had to have been a jewel to you. This man had to have meant something to you. And only Jesus can turn 
somebody with his type of testimony into somebody that is able to gather people on a Sunday night when football is being played. <laughs> and I end with these final words. As I was talking to Lena and her husband, she shared with me this beautiful story that for me, I think, just identifies who this beautiful man was. About this Mustang, about this beautiful car, this Mustang. And as she was describing to me, I didn't tell her, but one of my dream cars is also a classic Mustang. And as she shared it with me, I'm thinking, oh, like, she inherited it and I'm going to be able to see it. And I'm gonna be able to, like, you know? And so she shared with me this story. She said when he first gave his life to the Lord, he had this beautiful Mustang, just detailed, all tricked out. And Rudy came again to another crossroads, because there was a lot of crossroads in life. And as he was in the service, because he was part of this church for, for many years, a long time ago, he said that as he came to the church services sometimes, he would be always worried and paranoid. What's, what's, is my car okay? Is my car okay? Is my car okay? And then eventually the Holy Spirit convicted him and said, either you, you worship the car or you worship me. And this man was so radical and crazy for Jesus <laughs> that he sold the car. And as she's telling me, before she even has to say another word, I'm like, he could have given it to you. You know, just start it up. But this man knew what he wanted. He knew who he loved, and he knew how to serve God. And I believe that the inheritance he gave Lena was better than any Mustang car. And I believe the legacy he gave all of you guys was better than any Mustang car. He left a legacy that pointed to the cross. And I could just imagine that as God received him in heaven, he gave him back that Mustang and probably three or four more. <laughs> Because let me tell you, we don't know much about heaven, but one thing we do know that Jesus says that he created a space, a mansion, a place where we could dwell. And as a young kid, I would like to imagine that God has those rewards for us. And I believe that this guy right here is cruising down that street of Jerusalem, waiting for Lena, waiting for you. And if you don't have Christ in your life today, you'll have an opportunity towards the end. If you want prayer, we are here for you. And we just want to celebrate Rudy. As I begin to conclude, Rudy, you are a victor, you're a conqueror through the blood of the Lamb and through the word of your testimony. I know you may not be Pentecostal, but at this, at this moment, can you just praise Jesus with your hands, please? <laughs> we have another short video for you guys uh, as we continue to celebrate his life. If you guys could please play that for us, Eric. Thank you.
some words. I see some ladies with some faces. <laughs> <laughs> no? Linda coming up. <laughs> uh, you can do it for there if you want. You want to pass? You want to stay from there? I'll give you the microphone. You want to yeah? Is that okay? Okay, here you go. Go ahead. But at the end of all of that, he was still me. When he turned to our door, and his mother was overjoyed, she would thank God and read her Bible as she sat on the couch. And one day I was curious about what she was reading, and she told me that the mothers never stop praying for their children. Yeah. No matter what road they travel, what, what alleys they come out of, they're still sons. And I remember that, and I carried that with me. And like I said, he doesn't care. <laughs> but my, I had a 57 ship, and he borrowed it. <laughs> and I worked so hard for that 57 ship, and it became a part of me, because I did it on my own, and I was 18 of them. And then he borrowed it, and he goes, the motor blew up <laughs> in L.A. <laughs> I, I believed him, and at the same time, I didn't <laughs> And I never was, I wasn't angry with him. I just said, well, I guess I have to find another 57 <laughs> Also have um, Pastor Frank Alvarez. 
us. Pastor Fred Collins here. Come on, Pastor. Share some few words. They told me that you got three minutes. Ah. To stay here preaching. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's an honor to be here. Nina, Anthony, you know, the family, grandkids. Amen. It's an honor to be here for, uh, for Rudy. Uh, you know, I like I said, you know, years ago, 20 years ago, uh, you know, my dad passed away. And I said, Dad, I, I, I'm not saying bye. I said, oh, I'm going to see you later. Amen. Because this is what it's about. You know, Christ is coming back for, his, for the body of Christ. Amen. He's coming back. Jesus Christ is. Amen. And so this is our hope, amen, this is the hope. And Rudy went, you know, he, he went already, you know, and uh, uh, to be with the Lord, to be absent from the body, to be present with God, hallelujah. We thank God for that, you know, we thank God uh, that uh, you don't have to face any more of this, uh, the things that you're hearing that are going on around the world that we have to hear, you know. And, but these are all things that, are, that are, the Bible says that are gonna be happening, but we're to pray. Because he holds us responsible, church, amen? He holds us responsible to know that word, to study. This is why it's so important that you guys build these chairs. Everybody come. You know, if you're not going anywhere, come here, go wherever you're close by and get knowledge for the word of God. But I thank God for uh, Brother Rudy. You know, his works do follow him, amen? <laughs> I remember years ago, we were uh, there in Lodi. And uh, I still live in Lodi. I was born in Lodi. <laughs> uh, but years ago, there in Lodi, there on Sacramento Street. I mean, you know where Sacramento Street is. A lot of you know where Sacramento Street is. Well, Sacramento Street, yeah, it was like lively in bars. <laughs> it was not lively like people were praising the Lord. But we were there. We were there. Just in a little hole in a wall. That's all it was. Just a little hole in the wall. And that's where Rudy would have his services there on Sacramento Street and Pine, close to Pine Street. And so this, what we would do, we would come out, you know, Rudy said, okay, we're gonna take everything out. And we, we would bring it out to the street, you know? And uh, same thing with uh, Pastor Moore that, that went here to be with the Lord here some two, three years ago. Huh? Yeah, and we, we give honor to these men, amen, that have done work for the Lord. Their works do follow them, amen. Here's just temporary. Where's your treasure at? A lot of people work here hard for treasure. This is only temporary. Everything passes away, but there it endures forever. Amen. Where your heart is, there your treasure will be also. Amen. How I many you want your treasures to be everlasting? Amen. Everybody does. Of course, you have to want that. You know? And God has a, a great thing, but Rudy has ministered to a lot of countless people that were without hope. People started coming to the Lord, amen. Back then, uh, uh, bars were starting to shut down. And you find today that a, all, the majority of those bars have shut down, you know? Why? Because we stood there in the gap and telling the devil, hit the road, Jack. <laughs> amen. Go in Jesus' name, amen. Yeah, because there's wonderful working power in the name of the Lord. Amen? His name does not change, amen. His name does not change. The Bible says there's no other name that is given under heaven and earth. Even this is what we were proclaiming. This is what we were uh, 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 telling the people. You have to come to Jesus. Amen. I mean, we have people that, that uh, when we were there, you know, really would sing his little songs there. And, you know, you think, well, you think, well, Lena, you probably know them. But you, you sing them for us. Okay, we'll let you take them. Anyway, yeah, he was all joyful. You know, he was all joyful singing the little Spanish songs, you know. Yeah, and he, you know, and he would make just make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Yeah, I knew Lena's mom, Linda, there. You know, before Evangelina was ever uh, uh, present there with with any of us there. You know, then she came along there. Lena came along, and so uh, 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 we had the honors there to, you know dedicate her to the Lord and be her godparents there, you know. So we thank God, you know, we thank God for that privilege. And, and a little while that we got to know uh, 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 Lena's mom there, you know, Linda. And I was asking my wife, what do you remember about Linda? Because I don't remember too much. And that's been like I, about 35 years, you know. And, uh, and some of you were not even that old, you know. Uh, but it's been like a long time. I said, what do you remember? And he goes, she's that girl. Worker. That girl used to work hard, you know. 
Yeah, she said, she even hired me to go to work for her, you know, so she, she put me to work. So I said, oh, okay, okay, good, good. I said, yeah, if a man does not work, he should not eat. Yeah, so we all have to work somehow or another, you know, but she was a hard worker. Yeah, and we thank God for, for uh, without, without uh, Linda, Lena, Anthony wouldn't be sitting there with Lena, and I don't know where Anthony would be, but he's there, he's stuck with her now. Amen. So praise the Lord, Anthony. Amen. <laughs> We don't know how to really pertain ourselves to God, but God, we, He's given us a, 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 the, the Spirit of God. He's given us the Holy Spirit, amen, to help us, amen. And when you're going through changes, when you're going through hard times, and, and of course, we don't want to see our loved ones go, but I see so many loved ones go, and I said, don't be afraid. This is why Christ came, amen. That's why He came. He came to give you life, amen. And so we thank God for one, there was one vessel there in, the, in Sacramento Street that was doing the work, amen. And he was standing in the gap for all the ones that didn't have no hope, amen. And he's given them hope. There's people that who were owners of the bars that given their hearts to the Lord. I thank God for that, church, amen. I thank God that, that, uh, that God is a, a merciful God. He didn't come, he didn't send his son to say, you're guilty, you're guilty, you're guilty. You know, he didn't come. He said, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Because he loves you. He loves you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Yet whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That's what he came for. Amen. And he says, I'm going to go and they're going to do these things to me. I'm going to die. He says, so you don't have to die and in your sin. Amen. When he died, you died with him because you Ask him into your life. If you don't have him in your life, ask him, Lord, I need you, Lord. I need your help, Lord. Amen. Do I really got three minutes? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about the three minutes. <laughs> uh, he said, I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. Yeah, ask him. And the Bible says, you know, if you have that childlike faith, that he will come in your heart. Amen. It's that simple. Amen. And you start to learn the gospel. You start to learn the gospel. What is the gospel? The gospel is the good news. That is good news. He came to minister good, not evil. He says, I know the plans I have for you. Good and not evil. Yes, good for all of us. All of you. I don't know you guys. I know uh, Anthony. I know Lena. I know they're, they're the grandkids. But a lot of you, my do I know, you know, uh, uh, Loretta, yeah, and JD, yeah. But you know what? The rest of you, I don't know, but God knows you. He knows you and he sees your heart. He says, I love you. I love you. And that's, the, that's what Rudy came to do. He came to minister. I shared with Lena, I said, you know, Rudy did some work because he used to be a body of fender man. Yeah, he used to be a body of fender man. I had an old 62 Chevy. No, you know, and I had a big dead in the back. So I said, oh, Rick, can you fix it? He goes, oh, yeah, I can fix it for you. <laughs> I said, okay, Rick. And, uh, and uh, he did, and, uh, and this was back in like in the 70s or something like that. And, uh, and he brought my car. He goes, okay, it's all done. I said, well, how much do I get? He goes, it's $25. I said, oh, okay, well, that sounds really, really, really reasonable, so that's good. So I went and looked at it, and I looked at it, and I said, wow, you know, I don't know how to tell this guy, but it was a big old patch. <laughs> uh, a bundle, you know, cracked and all that, you know, and primered over. And I said, uh, okay, okay, all right, thank you very much. I just let God so, Yeah, but from there on, you know, we, I started knowing uh, Rudy. They used to call them ojitos. I don't know if you guys know what ojitos means. Yeah. It means little eyes. Why did they used to call them little eyes? Because Rudy was That's not one. saved back then, and he, he kind of you know, like to talk up, and so he, he like, the lies. yeah, I'm serious, you know, so, but, you know, to me, it was, like, normal, because that's, that was just He only normal. had one eye. He only had one eye. Well, ojitos, okay, ojitos. He's another ojitos, I don't know. But anyway, God, God is good, you know, he's taken, he's taken the, the, that, you know, where, where, where we were nothing, where I was nothing, where any of us were anything before the eyes of the Lord. And he's made us and he's shaped us. And if God be the builder of your house, you know, how, how, how can, you know, God be against those that are for him, that, that, that he's for us, amen? 
For God so loved us, amen, that's why he came. He said, I love you guys, I love you. And he loved us not condition. He didn't put conditions on you or I or Rudy or anyone else, nor Linda. Yeah, but he, he loved us unconditionally. And he says, come, come. He said, now you're clean because of the words I've spoken to you. Amen. So we have good, but it's to grow in the grace and the knowledge. Amen. This grace is not to continue to, with your old life because the Lord had to save me. And he had to save me from much. And, and he saved me from much, so we fall in love with the Lord much. But they that have been forgiven little love the Lord little. How many have been forgiven for much? I've been forgiven for much, you know. And I love the Lord much. We praise God, amen. And we thank God, amen, for uh, uh, Brother Rudy, amen, for the, the, the legacy he left to many. You probably don't know. He probably forgot about all them. But there's many that God had used to, to touch individuals that changed their lives. So we praise the Lord. Amen? Amen. So we give God glory. Amen. Yeah. God bless you. We'll see 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 you. Amen. Thank you, brother. All right. And last but not least, uh, we have Tony Arredondo. Tony Arredondo. All right. Here you go, Tony. Hi, everybody. Thank you, Nina. Um, yes, uh, my name is Tony Arredondo, and I'm also from Lodi. And um, it's an honor to be here, first of all. But um, back in the early 1990s, I was barely turning, I was barely turning 18 years old, and I had just newly got saved. And that was when I had the, the honor of meeting Pastor Ruby. When I sat there, I asked the Lord to, to share with me a scripture about him to you guys. And he gave me Ephesians 5, 1, 2. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. And that is what Pastor Ruby modeled was love. I was this stunned girl from Lodi running the streets, and God, I encountered God. And I got invited to, the, to that building on Sacramento Street for a revival. And let me tell you, revival back then isn't the revival that you see now. The fancy lights, the guest speaker coming from out of town. The revival that was happening on Sacramento Street was so powerful. Just a couple of men of God getting together and preaching the word and sharing the love of Jesus. It was very powerful for a very young Christian and a young girl just coming to the Lord. I'd be in the background watching men of God just minister to the people coming into the church, people off the street, people who just, that some churches would probably turn away now, amen? Let's keep it real but they loved on these people. So I was on the background watching Pastor Ruby love and share the love of Jesus to the people. And what a legacy. I know that when I heard about his passing, I thought about the legacy. I know that he imparted something in my life. I know that he's touched many people's lives with the words of his testimony and the word of God that he shared to others very powerful. I consider him a man of God that also imparted in my life. And I'm thankful for that. So being that I'm in Lodi still, um, at the church that I go to, Gravity, we also uh, cook a hot meal, we shower people, and we clothe people every Monday. And, and I know that there's that part of that legacy in me that has took me to the place to do the same thing that he also did. And that's so important that we can ask each other, right, Pastor Frank, what legacy are we leaving? What legacy are we imparting to our children? What legacy are we leaving in our city? And so I'd like to thank Pastor Ruby. Amen. 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 And I'll tell you right now, if you would ask him, do you want to come, come back? He'd say, no way. <laughs> Amen. 
well done, thou good and faithful servant. And may we, as his family, as his friend, as the people who minister with him, continue the legacy that he left. Amen. I shall not walk, I shall not walk. 
And uh, close your eyes, bow your heads. Keep the Rodriguez family in prayer. And I uh, believe um, we'll be some time of fellowship out in the lobby. But bow your heads and close your eyes. Let's pray. Father, we give you thanks for the life of Rudy. Uh, we have shared his story. We have shared multiple great memories of him, Father. And we believe that he is here with you right now, God in heaven. That he, through the blood of the Lamb, was able to have his name written in the book of life, Lord. And we are thankful, Lord God, for his life. We're thankful for his testimony. We're thankful, Lord God, for his legacy. But more importantly, Lord, we know that his greatest desire was to see people come to you, Jesus. And so I pray right now, Lord, if there's anybody in this place that is still struggling, Lord God, with addictions, that is still struggling, Lord God, with their own emotional instability, Lord, that is still trying to do life on their own, Father, that today, Lord God, the Holy Spirit can convince them to get to know, Father, the Creator, our Jesus Christ, so that they may also know, Lord God, the Savior of Rudy, so that they may also experience the joy that this man had, Father, and so that they also may know, Lord God, that when the day comes, that death comes and knocks at our door, we have nothing to fear. But we have a moment to rejoice and know that our greatest burdens are finally over. That we have fought the good fight, ran the good race, and that our eternal reward, Lord God, waits for us, Lord God. And so for all of those here, Lord God, that think that this is a goodbye to Rudy, may they be part of the people here that know that this is just until I see you next time, Lord. Because we know that we will see Rudy once again. And that we will together, like the Revelation says, be worshiping you, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And we will cast our crowns onto your feet and glorify you in one single voice, Lord God. And so we thank you, Lord God, for the Rodriguez family. As they continue this time, Lord God, of reminiscing and remembering, I pray against any spirit of depression. I pray against any spirit of sadness and anxiety. May they know, Lord God, that Rudy is in a better place. And that he would have loved for them, Lord God, not necessarily to just move on, Lord God, but to live life. And live life to the fullest, Lord. And that his legacy can continue as they continue to share the gospel, share the good news, and share the joy of Jesus. And once again, Lord, if there's somebody in this place that wants to give their lives to you, Father, may they be brave, Lord God, and courageous enough to know, Lord God, that there's a church here in Stockton. There's churches in Lodi. There's churches, Lord God, in Lakewood, Father. And that there is a place where they can call home, Father. We pray against the attack and the plan of the enemy. We thank you once again. We ask that you bless for God the food, bless the fellowship. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. 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 God bless you, uh, everybody. And um, there's some music playing right now, and then uh, we'll see you guys in the lobby. Hope I did your